It's the 2K Sports pregame show. With the diesel and the jet, this is Ernie Johnson. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Tonight, we'll see the Golden State Warriors as they play against the Dallas Mavericks. And guys, for the Mavericks, they lost game one in this matchup earlier this season. They'll see them four times in all, looking to even the series with a win tonight. And as we reach the midway point, Kenny, still a lot of games left on the schedule. How do players cope with the wear and tear their bodies go through? Well, a lot of times when you're mentally or physically tired, you know, you could sit there and all of a sudden you misquote things, you miss say things here on the analyst desk. On a basketball court, you, that's turnovers. That's missing assignments, missing rebounds. Same thing. Like, I know this is our, what, 82nd game this year? You're starting to feel a little bit? That's how those guys feel. I didn't know the midpoint was the 82nd game. But anyway, injuries start to take a toll. No, but we've done 87 second two games. Doesn't mean yeah, the team. We've done a lot we've of games oh, in, yeah, in our role right. here in the right. I miss two, two games a night. Remember on the set. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was saying the injuries they start to take a toll. Not just the big ones, the little ones. The type of injuries I hate are the freak injuries. One time, Ernie, I was walking with my shoes off, stubbed my that's, toe. That's called barefoot. That's a freak injury. Stubbed my toe. Was out for six weeks. So you got to get rest, eat well. Well, if you kick a brick wall, knees, that's not a. And man up. Yeah. yeah maybe you should. Uh, here's Kevin Harlan. Barefoot. Oh, say does that star Welcome everyone to the NBA on 2K Sports. Kevin Harlan here along with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. The Warriors with their last game here in Golden State before heading out on the road. Last time they met was in Dallas where they beat the Mavericks. And really an emphatic win for them, especially considering that it came in an opponent's building. And there's no question it was their offense that carried them. I love the way they went and got this game, Greg. I mean, they attacked at every opportunity, never relaxed or sat back, and as a result, they eventually pulled away. Now, we'll look at Dallas's starting lineup. Parsons and Dirk are in at the forward spots. Williams is out there with J.J. Barea. And you think about Stephen Curry, clearly one of the greatest shooters the league has ever seen. Clark, I think you could make a case that he's the best off-the-dribble three-point shooter in league history. Uh, what do you think? I, I, th I think he's the best total shot maker shooter we've had in the league. When you look at all aspects of shooting, I don't know if anybody's ever been better. They double-team Curry. Bogut kicks to Green. Right side curl. Shoots it up. And he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. And if you're the guy who has to guard him, it is never going to be an easy night for you. On defense, the Warriors. Their last game, a win against San Antonio, looking to carry that into this one. They just weren't challenged. I mean, nearly as much as they should have been. Wow, the floor just really opened up for him on that possession. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for good offense, but that was just a terrible reaction from the defense. Special thanks to Kia for that sweet Kia slam cam replay. Maria, the pass to Nowitzki. That three off the mark. The Warriors have gotten their first three shots to go in for it to start off this game. And there's Barbosa. That's good on the assist by Curry. Four straight makes out of the gate. That's a sweet start. The Mavericks have gone two for four from the field so far today. Now here's Berea, guarded by Kirk. Left side Williams. Down to five on the shot clock. Got freed up. Nice work off the pit. 
just the height separation on that mid-range jumper. Excellent job of taking it down. Open. No good on the three. Not a problem when that's your first miss of the game. Strong start. Here's measuring. Good, and it's Perea who picks up the assist. And when the size advantage is as big as it was there, I mean, that's exactly what he's supposed to do in that situation. It's Curry outside. Good. Curry's got five now. They really can't allow him too many open looks like that. I mean, that's just inviting trouble. Borea kicks to Williams. And the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. And, you know, one thing about Darren Williams, he used to get to the charity strike at will. At the height of his career, he's averaging almost six free throws a game. The last couple seasons, he's been down around three. And Clark, for Darren Williams, he clearly has the handle and the strength to get to the basket, but no longer the explosion that we're used to seeing. Yeah, you know, he's had some ankle injuries, and that certainly is a part of that. And he's also in his 30s now, so largely a perimeter jump shooter, but still can impact the game with his deep shooting and playmaking. Morea, no good. Major defensive lapse right there. And he's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. You've got to stay attached to him. And lucky he couldn't punish them for it. And they get it back. Warriors leading by three. Green with the ball. Picked up by Nowitzki. Barbosa kicks to Green. And another three for Golden State. They're going back to the three-point shot over and over and over. And they may have found the Achilles heel of this defense. That was their ninth straight point from beyond the arc. Great offensive performance they're putting on. You see the benefit of knocking down baskets consecutively because it leads to the confidence growing and growing. And guys, we call that the zone because that's where they are right now. They are in a zone, and I'm sure they feel unstoppable. Oh, this is the kind of start they were hoping for. Yeah, shots falling off to a very good start offensively as a result. And the pass to Williams. Nowitzki sets a screen for Williams. Parsons attacking. And that one hits back on. Great looking defense, really, just to disrupt the rhythm on that shot. Yeah, it really turned it from a simple, straightforward look into a very difficult shot. It's taken them no time to build this lead up. Great first quarter offensively. But no time to relax here. They've got to keep the pressure on with the defense, and I think they've got to try to put this one away early. And Dallas calls their first time out of the game. They couldn't put the pieces together, losing the last matchup with the Lakers. Yeah, I had the chills watching that. It really was a nightmare defensively for them when you go into that building and get punished by some very hot shooting. They didn't challenge the shooters. They didn't defend the shooters like they should have. Once the fans got into it and the arena started ramping up and cranking up, uh, it was over. To halt the run, and it's sent back by Spates. Williams can't hit. Well, not really his best quarter as far as scoring, but let's see if he can eventually get back on track. Curry kicks to Spates. A three-pointer no good. You know, even though he missed that three-point shot, I think the defense has to do a better job of challenging the shot. Yeah, as a coach, you can really ill afford to have those types of opportunities presented against your defense. Really aggressive play there, taking it to the rack against the big foul. You know, Greg, aggressiveness is really the only option when you're on the wrong side of the size equation. And a huge lead here early to start. Well, you know, right from the tip, there's not anything they haven't done well so far. It's Williams with the drive, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Williams has got his second bucket tonight. Nice work on the inside. Hard to get that one up and over the big foul. Well, it's not supposed to be easy down there. And a little artistry on the inside helped him make it happen. It just seems like the more he touches it, the more the lead grows. Azili's checked in for Draymond Green. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. Scoring breakdown for the Warriors. 
You know what, guys? It looks to me like they're really in sync here, all on the same page. They've already got a bunch of assists. And that's what's created a rhythm for them offensively. That's also why you see them knocking down that mid-range jump shot. Pass to Parsons. Knocks it loose. Iguodala with the steal. And now here comes Iguodala leading the break. Hammers it home to polish off the break. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at either end steals fast break buckets, and the other team scrambling to find its game. Great point. I mean, that aggression has allowed them to just create a lot of havoc, and boy, are they taking advantage. Outside, Felton dishes it to Villanueva. Shot clock at five, and that comes off the assist by Raymond Felton. Villanueva's got his first bucket of the night. They double team curve. Here's Azili. And that one goes in as he is fouled. It'll be three points if he converts at the line. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And on the flip side, Greg, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. They've got to offer more resistance here. And the Warriors making a change here. Thompson's checked in. The Warriors have made their only other free throw attempt today in an earlier trip to the line. And the season numbers for them at the line thus far are, are really poor. Something I'm sure they are making a point of emphasis. And, and guys, that allows their opponents to play very aggressive defense if they choose to, knowing it's not a bad thing to send them to the foul line. Always seems the Mavs are able to compete for a title, Clark, but their window might be closing with some of their stars aging, namely Dirk Nowitzki. You're exactly right, Kevin, because Dirk is the centerpiece of that franchise, has been for over a decade. They made the Rondo trade last year, trying for a big finals run, but eventually they'll start to have to build for the future. Now here's Williams. He's tightly guarded. Feeds it to Kerr. Lots of room. He squares up and sinks it. Curry's got 15 points. I don't think they can ask much more of him than what he's done this quarter. Curry brings the double on the wing, Williams. The shot from the low post is good. You know, obviously, he knows how to finish with some flair. Warriors leading by 14. Curry with it. Now Felton defending. They double-team Curry. Here's Azili from past the arc, and that one's good. Azili's got his second basket. Great three-point shooting here out of the gate. That makes four makes already from long distance. Bring music scorching those nets. How long can they keep this up, though? Dallas calls timeout. Mavericks trail by 17. Felton kicks to Parsons. Signed by Villanueva. Parsons attacking. An easy layup after coming off the pick. Parsons got his first basket. And really, the defense didn't do a lot to fight around that screen on that possession. Thompson outside. And the shot is good. And the Warriors lead by 17. And that's going to increase the field goal percentage even more. They have a huge edge in that category. And that's because they've been playing smart basketball. I mean, they've been very patient offensively. And their shot selection has been superb. And Parsons kicks to Felton. Just five on the clock. With some art. And the rejection by Azili. Here's Felton. The basket good off the assist from Evans. And the Warriors decide to take their first time out here. Yeah, maybe a change of the game plan right now, looking at some different sets because of the matchups. Yeah, I agree with you because they're looking to tweak things to maybe get those matchups working in their favor.
111 left to play here in the first. They double team Curry. Thompson outside. Azili dishes to Iguodala. And that one's good. Iguodala's got eight points. They've come out with a take no prisoners approach on the glass today. Yeah, and it's already got them a plus five margin in the rebound column. Here's Felton. Here's Evans. Danny battles for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. Evans has got his first two points of the night. Just lazy defense on the glass there. Well, nobody boxed out. Nobody put a body on anybody else. Things like that not only drive the coach crazy, that stuff gets under my skin. Defensively, giving up far too many open rhythm looks. And to battle back, they've got to shore up the defense. I mean, there's no other way to come back from a deficit unless you play good defense. Livingston kicks to Curry. Azili the pass to Iguodala. There's the triple. Another three for Golden State. And really setting the tone early with their three-point shooting. Greg, that's already five made triples in the first quarter. What a start. And Williams, here we go. Parsons dishes to Villanueva. One second left, and that's not going to go. We're at the end of the first quarter, and what a blowout already in this one. And Dirk Nowitzki steadily climbing the all-time scoring rankings. He talked about the remarkable journey of his long and illustrious career. When I first got here, you know, my... Dirk has proven himself through the test of time. As tough as it may have been back in his rookie year, he overcame those obstacles to become this elite NBA player, Clark Destin, for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know, people now talk about players being a Dirk Nowitzki type. And that's a type any team would like to have. One of the greatest power forwards in NBA history, for sure. And welcome back. It's been all one-sided so far through the first quarter as our second quarter gets underway. And guys, we've seen the Warriors really take control here. They come out the gates here strong and put together just a solid first quarter. A ton of good looks for them, Greg, on offense. And it's quality shots they're getting. On the floor right now for the Mavericks, Parsons and Dirk are in at the forward spots. J.J. Barea is out there with Felton. The Warriors have gone two for two in the game at the line. And he makes the first. And so he hits both. Now Berea, he's coming off a 13-point game against the Lakers. Yeah, not to mention the four big steals on the night, getting after it on both ends. That's good for Nowitzki on the assist by Felt. Nowitzki's got his second bucket of the game to go. You know, he almost pulled the trigger on that possession, but recognized that there was a better option. That's what we mean by playing for your teammates. Bogut the pass to Livingston. It's stolen by Berea. And here we go. The Mavericks in a fast break. Berea with the ball. They set the screen. Parsons. Second chance shot. And it's sent back by Bogut. An even three on three break. Baseline Jay on the way. Parsons with the rebound. And Chandler Parsons changing teams last season saw a little bit of a regression. Down in points, rebounds, and assists. But, but more troubling, down in field goal and free throw percentage. So you can tell that that transition to a new team, new system, new role definitely had an impact. Livingston kicks to Barbosa. That drops, and it comes off the assist from Livingston. 
Barbosa's got six points. You know, it's really hard not to notice the difference in the passing of these two teams today. Yeah, it's a stark discrepancy when you look at the assist columns and you see that difference as far as the fluidity in their respective offenses. Chandler Parsons coming over from Houston to Dallas, moving into a new scheme, a different scheme than he had with the Rockets. It was his first go around with coach Rick Carlisle. Yeah, and it's not easy for a player to adjust to a coach, a new coach, or a new coach to adjust to a player. That takes some time. It's a two-way street. We know Parsons has the talent. And Chandler Parsons really set off a Texas rivalry last year, drafted by the Rockets in the second round. He received an offer sheet in free agency from the team's rival, the Dallas Mavericks, eventually chose Dallas, injured in the playoffs, hurt a knee, only played the one game. But I think they've got great things ahead for him with the man. Yeah, you know, Parson was a restricted free agent, so that meant the Rockets could match if they wanted to, but they declined to match Dallas's offer, which sent Parsons packing just up the road in Texas. Dallas calls timeout. You know, back to the topic of Parsons' free agency, the offer from the Mavs was three years, 46 million. Houston didn't want to go that high, so they reluctantly let Parsons leave. Ultimately, Houston filled Parsons' small forward role with the signing of Trevor Ariza. Not bad. Some changes for Golden State. Spates checked in for Bogut, and it's Draymond Green in for Jason Thompson. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Here's Berea. And the rebound goes to the Warriors. And talking about the Texas showdown over Parsons last year, even his teammates got involved. After Parsons left, James Harden reacted saying that Dwight Howard and Harden were the cornerstones of the Rockets. But that's probably nothing compared to the rivalry that the two teams' ownerships felt. Here's Berea. It's rebounded by Livingston. It's a plus five advantage for them in the rebounding category after that. Oh. Very steady with their work on the interior. Really a well-rounded effort overall. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, I mean, a cold stretch offensively. They desperately need a basket. Here's Mesri. Dallas, no good that time either. Golden State's gone. Six of eight on three-pointers in the game. An outstanding 75% mark. And the wide-open shot from Green. Green missing again. And that's the shot he has to take. Exactly. That's the right look. The decision was good. He just didn't execute. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Boy, that's a really nice feed by J.J. Beret. Warriors leading by 23. Iguodala dishes to Spates. And that one's good. Spates has got his first points of the game. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Dime-dropping delights is what I call it. I, that is a nice pass. I will give you that one. Yeah, he's on the money, that's no doubt. That's good. Perea's got eight points. Took advantage of some shoddy defense there. They've got to at least get a finger on it. Felton against Barbosa. Pass to Livingston. On the wing, Iguodala. And lets it go from deep. Rebound by Raymond Felton. You know, when he has the ball outside like that, that's exactly the kind of D they need to play on. Here's Nowitzki. And the rebound goes to the Warriors. Iguodala's got four rebounds in this game. For three, Barbosa. That drops, and it comes off the assist from Livingston. Barbosa's got five points now this quarter. Having a lot of trouble stopping the three-point shot. And they're not making up for it with their own shots from deep either, so that's a double-edged sword there. And Nowitzki wide open. He fires, sinks the 15-footer. Nowitzki's got six. Just such a good shooter from that range. And you factor in his height advantage. It's almost unfair. Livingston passes to Green. Spates sets a screen, shoots a fader, and there are the Warriors now with another bucket. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of it. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge Greg, and when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. Here's Nowitzki. Count that as his fourth basket of the night. Just seven shots to get there. 
and started hot and he's only gotten harder. The Warriors have gone seven of 11 from the field in the second quarter. And a slam dunk by Spates. You know, he might be small for a center, but it doesn't really matter because he can jump out of the building. Mavericks have gone six of 13 so far from the field here in the second quarter. Belton attacking. And another basket for Dallas. I tell you, he has some impressive moves in his repertoire. That's as good as it gets, but just one of many. And for Raymond Felton last year was nothing short of a disaster. Missed the first 31 games with an ankle injury sustained in preseason. And he played for a poor team. And, and things, you know, Greg, uh, being the lead of the ball handler like you were, they just never got much better for Felton as the season went on. Yeah, the problem when you have that issue early on is the season isn't going to wait for it. Right. You know, you're basically in catch-up mode. And so because of that, he never got into any kind of a rhythm when he was available to play. And that's not surprising, given that he averaged less than 10 minutes a game for the season after averaging 33 a game for his entire career. Here's Williams. Count that as his fourth basket of the night. Just seven shots to get there. Another bucket in the paint. That's something they just have not been able to stop today. Yeah, the defense is all about disrupting timing and spacing. And, and what they've got going right now is not getting it done. And, you know, getting back to Raymond Felton, it looked at one point like he would become the league's next great playmaker. Drafted fifth overall in 2005, immediately after Darren Williams and Chris Paul. Felton never quite reached the stratosphere of his fellow draft mates. Barbosa with it. Williams picks him up. Here's Curry with the three. Can't get it to go. And it's Dallas the other way. Well, it looks like he's cooled down a bit after hitting those two in the first quarter. And the officials signal the backcourt violation. Not very careful there. So both teams making some changes here. And one last thought about Raymond Felt. I, I really feel like he's at that classic crossroads in one's career. If his conditioning is there, if he's healthy, he still has the skills and the moxie to make a difference. It just comes down to him wanting to make that effort, which gets harder after a decade of wear and tear on your body. Charlie, 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 Charlie. Parsons on the wing. He's coming off a 19-point game against the Lakers in Los Angeles. Yeah, and he also did a great job on the backboards, Kev, and, and that also was a factor. Excellent feed from Steph Curry. Dallas shooting 53% in the second quarter. Good ball movement yielding good looks. Screen by Villanueva. Oh, trying for it. Rush with the steal. That's tipped. Now here's Williams. 17 points for him last game against the Lakers in Los Angeles. And don't forget about his playmaking in that game either. I mean, he did a great job of attacking the D and creating opportunities for both himself and his teammates. Kicks it to Kirk. They double-team Kirk. A minute 20 left in the first half of the game. There's the bucket. Good. He's been one of their more reliable options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this lead. Williams kicks to Villanueva. They get a hand on it. One-on-one -on -one fast break. Right through the D for the layup. Habs got five points in the quarter. Just a great job of attacking on the break. Yeah, you know, exploding to the basket like that, Greg, just as soon as that ball was going the other way, that's um, exactly how you want to do it. And it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. He'll shoot one more at the free throw line. It's going to be Williams shooting. And it goes on Draymond Green and Drew Bogut. He's checked in for the Warriors. Thompson comes in for Brandon Rush. They double-team Curl. 41 seconds left in the second quarter. That's good. He's picking up right where he left off in the first quarter. Maverick shooting has been great up over 50%. In fact, 52%. Parsons against Green. Thompson with it. His last outing, he had eight points. And he gets it to go. And now it's up to 25 points for Steph Curry. Those are starting to add up. Of their last five baskets, three of them have been three-pointers. And clearly, it's about how poorly the defense has played. They've got to close out 
faster. For Dallas, they have been solid at the line so far. Four for four. Yeah, and over the course of the season, they're a respectable 78%. That comes in handy in close games. And they've made progress in that department from last season going into this one, guys. I mean, the numbers have improved. Right wing. From deep. And that's not going to go. And through the first half, a pretty lopsided affair. The Warriors on top, just dominating this one. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Thank you, Kevin. Steph, what's been the key to what's working well out there for you guys right now? Defensive end, we rebound the ball, keeping them off the glass, and uh, being able to execute an offensive end. Steph, thank you so much. Plenty of ingredients to a solid effort, Kevin. Thanks so much, Doris, and we'll step away briefly, but get you right back in there for the start of the third quarter after this break. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. We've been uh, watching a pretty lopsided game through the first half, that's for sure. I'm Ernie Johnson, joined again by Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. What a start it was for Stephen Curry. He had 25 points, seven assists, and one rebound. Taking a look at the Warriors, Kenny, what'd you think? In terms of their offensive performance, that was a very well-played half of basketball. Good ball movement off the ball, hard screens being set, and they found the guy for the open look. That's how they were able to shoot such a tremendous percentage from the field. With that fluid, efficient offense, they'll be tough to catch in the second half. And looking at Dallas, Shaq, your thoughts. Well, when you look at the opponent field goal percentage, that tells the whole story. They gave up way too many good looks. When they come out of the break, they got to play way tougher, Ernie. Get those hands up. Get in your opponent's face. Do something. And that'll do it for now as we send you back to Kevin Harlan for the start of the second half. Welcome back, everybody.